Hello, everybody. We are at the top of the hour. Welcome to the Small School Districts Association Virtual College Fair powered by StriveScan. My name is Sibel Rossim. I will be your facilitator for today's session. We have about 45 minutes on the clock, so super, super quick. But as we all know, time flies when you're having a good time. So we have a great session for you and some absolutely amazing institutions to tell you a little bit more about themselves. So again, welcome to the Virtual College Fair. Um, so a couple of different things as your facilitator. Facilitator, I'd like to just remind you of, first and foremost, we encourage questions, so please ask those questions. But the way that you're going to ask them is through the Q&A. There's a button in your Zoom toolbar uh, that says Q&A, and you're going to go ahead and click on that and type in the uh, questions that you may have to the presenters at any time. I stress at any time. We do not want to uh, cut off any of your questions at the end, but the session does go pretty quickly, so please do not wait until the very uh, end of the session. If you uh, know what institution you wanna send those questions to, go ahead and uh, send it to them in the Q&A at any time. Also, please make sure that when you are asking the question, you are putting the institution's name within your question so we all know who the question goes to. Uh, also, the panelists cannot see or hear you. Your camera and microphone are turned off, so it is just that much more important to use that Q&A feature to ask those questions. Also, fun fact, uh, our presenters and panelists may be putting some great information in the chat whether that is their contact information or a link that they want you to check out, go ahead and check the chat. Although it is disabled on your end as an attendee, it is really important that you go ahead and check uh, that information that will be in the chat box. All right, in terms of signing up for more sessions, we do not have any more sessions uh, for the next time slot. So just look back onto the website for any other sessions that you may be interested in later on down the road. And then last but not least, a recording will be available of this. So if mom missed out on today, maybe grandma wants to check it out with you, a friend wants to go to these schools and check them out too, or maybe you just wanna relive the fun with us, a recording of all the sessions will be available in the next few business days at strivescan.com backslash SSDA. Now, with that said, I would love to get started. Our first institution up at this virtual college fair is Cedar Crest College. Elizabeth, if you're speaking, we can't see or hear you, just so you know. Sorry about that. I was muted. Um, so everybody can see my screen now. Um, you are good to go. Okay, thank you. This is Elizabeth Ortiz and I am a senior admissions counselor at Cedar Crest College. Um, so I'm starting with a few facts about Cedar Crest. So Cedar Crest was founded in 1867, which shows that we have a long history of educated and je uh, next generation of women leaders. And we do that in a small um, private liberal arts setting. Uh, we have a school of adult and graduate education for returning adult students and our graduate student population that is co-ed, but all of our traditional daytime students, students that live in the residence halls are all women. Our average class size is only 15 students. Cedar Crest offers over 40 field of studies, 30 minors and certificates and over 15 graduate programs. Students who do meet the qualifications are invited to become part of the honors program at Cedar Crest College. These particular students enter Cedar Crest with a 3.50 GPA earned throughout high school. The honors program consists of honors courses, uh, research experiences, projects. So our academic programs, we offer over 40 academic programs to choose from. You don't need to decide on a program of study right away until the beginning of your sophomore year. Cedar Crest does 
um, students are very academically driven, which often leads to them taking on more than one academic area of interest to dive into. This is very common for students to double major or have multiple academic interests at Cedar Crest, for example, uh, forensic science and chemistry. We also offer a four plus one program, and those are indicated by a red asterisk on this slide. You can earn your master's degree with as little as one additional year of coursework. Life on campus. We are NCAA Division Three for our athletic programs, and we offer 10 uh, NCAA Division Three sports, which are listed on here on the slide. We have over 50 clubs and organizations. They range from academic uh, related, or they can be for fun. If you don't see a club uh, that you're interested in and that we don't have, you can start your own. Now, once you are admitted, these are the resources in place to assist you in your success in achieving your goals here at Cedar Crest. Uh, first of all, we have the Student Success Center. It holds our Office of Academic Advising, Tutoring, the Writing Center, Services for Students with Disabilities. Our Information Technology Department has a student help desk, tutoring on any software that may be needed for your classes, and also offers discounts on purchasing hardware and software. And lastly, our career planning office will assist you with all of your professional goals. This includes preparing for an interview, making a career change, or advancing in your current uh, career. This is a lifetime benefit for program graduates. So even after you graduate from Cedar Crest, you can utilize the career planning um, center. Finally, students and their guests can also take advantage of wellness programs and fitness classes, most of which are free, access to athletic competitions, and two fitness pools. Here at Cedar Crest, there's a couple of things that we do guarantee our students. Uh, first and foremost is our four-year guarantee. So here at Cedar Crest, we do guarantee that you will graduate well within four years. And how we do that is you're going to declare your major, you're going to meet with your academic advisor, and you're going to sign a contract with them if you're interested in this program. Um, what the contract says is basically that you're going to pay attention and follow the academic plan that your advisor sets up for you. In turn, your advisor promises by signing the contract to make sure that they're getting you the classes that you need on the rotation that you need them and that they're keeping you on track. If for any reason you're not going to graduate on time and you have signed this contract, we do take full responsibility and we will pay for you to take the class at another institution. We have a guaranteed studying abroad program, which is called our sophomore year expedition. During your sophomore year, we do guarantee that you and your classmates will take a trip to another country for seven to 10 days to be of service to that community. The only cost to the student is the cost of a passport. Uh, Cedar Crest covers the cost for your flight, your stay, your excursions, and your food. So for every single student, we also guarantee employment on campus for all four years up to 20 hours a week. Once you are admitted at Cedar Crest, we're going to automatically evaluate you for something called a merit scholarship. Merit scholarships are based on your academic achievements from high school, so we're looking at your GPA. If you submit your SAT or ACT scores, we will include those, and we're also going to look at class rank if that's something that your school does. We also offer needs-based scholarships, so make sure you complete your FAFSA and other sc additional scholarships listed on the slide. And then finally, we have a program. It's a financial aid program for students called our STAR program. STAR stands for State Tuition Access Rate. And what it does is basically provides you with your tuition at Cedar Crest at the same price of your in-state flagship institution. So for Pennsylvania, it would be uh, Penn State. You do have to qualify in the qualifications for this year because we're not doing ACT or SATs. It's 3.25 GPA or higher. The application process, Cedar Crest is rolling admissions, which means that you can apply at any point in time during the year. For your convenience, you can scan the QR code on here to access the application. You will need your official transcripts from your high school. You will need a personal essay and a graded paper or a teacher or counsel letter of recommendation. I have provided my uh, email address if you would like to email me with any questions. Thank you so much for your time. Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for Cedar Crest College, please put it in the Q&A down at the bottom. If you have any questions at all, uh, go ahead and put it in that Q&A at the bottom for any of our institutions moving forward. Next up, we have Drexel University. 
Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for coming today. I'm so excited to talk to you a bit about Drexel. Uh, Drexel is a large private tier one research university. We're located in Philadelphia and we are right in the city. So it's a very urban environment. City streets run through campus. You'll see taxis going by. There are incredible food trucks all over the place. You see the skyscrapers right behind us. But at the same time, we are a full residential university. So what that means is that students are actually required to live on campus their first two years. So it might not be the traditional um, campus, but it's a traditional student experience still. You're able to get really involved. I'll talk more about student life in a few minutes. And then also we are on a full campus where pretty much everything is within walking distance. You're not going to need to take shuttles to your classes. It takes about 15 minutes to walk across campus, so very manageable in size. And then the final thing I want to mention about where we're located, we are in a section of the city called University City because we are one of three schools there. So right across the street from us is the University of Pennsylvania. And then on the other side of Penn's campus is the University of the Sciences of Philadelphia. So all together between the three universities, there are about 40,000 college age students in our neighborhood so it's like a college town, but within the larger city. So there's always something to do on campus, in the neighborhood, or in the city itself. Our undergraduate population makes up just around 15,000 of those 40,000 college-age students in our neighborhood. So again, we're on the larger side for a private school. But what I really want to focus on is the fact that we're not going to feel as big as you might expect when you're on campus. You can see on your screen, our median class size, our student-to-faculty ratio are a lot smaller than what most students expect. And that's very intentional. We have a strong focus on experiential education. So we do a lot of hands-on project-based learning, which is not something you can do if you're sitting in a large library lecture all of the time. We really want you to be a participant in your education, not just a bystander. And I'll talk more about that in just a second. Um, but first, I do want to show you we have over 80 majors across 15 colleges and schools. If you know what you want to study, you would apply directly to that major, start off taking classes in that program right away. We don't front load your general education classes. So it's not like you need two years of gen eds before you hit your major. You'll start in that program from the start, which means that you get to know your faculty and other students very well um, from the beginning. If you're not sure what you want to study, no problem. We have great undeclared options within most of the colleges and schools you see on the screen. We also have a first year exploratory studies program. If you're really unsure, you say I could go one of 20 directions, that first year option is a really good fit. It comes with extra advising and an upperclassman mentor. Heading back to that idea of experiential education, this is actually something that comes from our founding. So when A.J. Drexel founded us in 1891, he said that he wanted students to not just get an education that was good, but that's good for something. So we very much have that use inspired idea of education coming from the very beginning at Drexel and it permeates everything we do now from the experiences that you get to have with your classes, whether that's actually investing money in the stock market, some of Drexel's endowment funds through our finance program, heading out to a local hospice to help patients there write their memoirs through our English program or working with standardized patients. They're actors from Philadelphia in our nursing in um, our College of Nursing and Health Professions. There are lots of ways for you to learn by doing in the classroom. But the way that all of this culminates for us at Drexel is through our co-op program. Co-op stands for cooperative education. It is a six month break from your classes where you are working in your field of interest. And that's typically in a full-time paid job. So this is a way for you to make sure you're headed in the right direction. You actually like what you can do with your major. And if not, you can come back, change your major, head down the right path from there. You're building a strong resume. You're building connections in your field. So you're set up very well for success. Most of our programs have two options, a four-year program with one six-month co-op, a five-year program with three co-ops. That five-year program is not an extra year of tuition. For both options, you're doing 12 quarters of classes. So you're only paying 12 quarters of tuition. Actually, more of our students opt for that five-year option if it's available in their program. And then a just quick, a quick note for you, we do have a number of accelerated degrees where you you can get both a bachelor's and a master's in a shorter period of time. What all of these co-op experiences do is they set up our students very well for success. When they graduate, they have experience, they have connections in their industry. They're able to go into an interview and really say, I'm the best fit for this job because I've done it before. Um, and so they're getting positions in their field 
they're satisfied with those positions and our students also have very high success rates for getting into grad school, med school and law school. Outside of the classroom, students are very involved in anything and everything. We have amazing clubs and organizations, over 350 of them, Division I sports, performing arts, Greek life. We're also very involved in community service. All students their first year take a class called Civic Engagement 101 that talks about challenges that communities face and how they can make a difference. There's also a small community service requirement as a part of it. For the application, process, we do full holistic review. We're on the common application and the coalition application. We are test optional for at least the next two years. That's for everything, undergraduate um, majors, scholarships, our honors program, our first year research program. The only program that is not test optional is our eight year combined BA, BS, MD program with our medical school because the med school still requires test scores. Everything else though, test optional. All students are automatically considered for merit-based aid. So you don't need to apply for those scholarships. For need-based aid, you need to submit both the CSS profile and the FAFSA. I'm gonna put up my contact information here. Feel free to reach out anytime you have questions, but I'll also drop a link in the chat where you can find out who your specific admissions counselor is. It's all based by where you live. Um, so we know your schools. We are happy to reach out and hopefully maybe next year we'll actually get to see you in person. But for now, turn it back over to Sabelle. All right. Thank you so, so much. If you have any questions for Drexel University, please put it down in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up, we have Elizabethtown College. There you go. All right, hello everyone. My name is Monica Venturella. I'm one of our assistant directors of admissions here at E-Town. I'm basically just gonna go over um, how to become a Blue Jay. So to get started here, um, just like to kind of go over our basics uh, about E-Town. So we are a small private liberal arts college, about 1,600 students on campus. Average class size for us is gonna be around 17. Uh, so pretty small class sizes. I will never really have a class over, I would say maybe 20, 27 students in the entire classroom, which is really good. We really pride ourselves on having those small class sizes and being able to work in a smaller environment. Next here, I'd like to highlight all of our different majors. Um, so we break our majors up into different schools. Uh, so you can see a listing of schools on your screen here, but we have over 160 of them. So lots of things that you can do while you're at E-Town. Most popular for us, I would say, would be our School of Sciences uh, as well as School of Business. Um, so Engineering is a pretty popular major with E-Town as well as occupational therapy, business, um, and then kind of on the other end of things, education and music are also really strong majors for us. So you really kind of find your fit here at E-Town. Uh, like I said, you don't really have to necessarily pick a certain major and stick with it the, you know, for the entire time. Oh, I see a question here. Um, all right, so I'm just gonna continue here. Um, so as far as everything, for as far as major wise, lots going on, I'm gonna, quickly stop sharing here. It looks like it is not sharing correctly. I apologize. All right. Here we go. <laughs> I apologize, a little bit of technical difficulties on my end. Um, but lots of majors, like I mentioned before, tons that you can do while you're in within your major. Within each major, you do have a lot of signature learning experiences. Uh, so signature learning are basically things that take you outside the classroom. Uh, so things like research, internships, study abroad, community-based learning, as well as capstone experiences. With these, we guarantee every single student will complete at least two of them. Um, so the nice thing is that they don't really have to necessarily panic about like, oh my gosh, I have to do signature learning. When do I fit it in? We help you with that. Uh, so we'll make sure you get in your research right away if you decide to do research. You can start doing these experiences as early as freshman year. So feel free if you're interested in going abroad, you know, once the world has opened up again, go ahead and you know, tell your advisor, hey, I'm interested in going abroad. How can we fit that in? Every single major gets to do these. I would say most people end up doing more than two experiences throughout their entire time at E-Town because we really pride ourselves <clears throat> on the fact that experience is gonna set you apart from any other student applying for different jobs. Next, I wanna highlight a little bit more fun things on campus. So we have over a hundred different clubs that you can get involved in, uh, but I do like to highlight our newest building. So our newest building is the Bauer Center. Uh, so this is our sports fitness and well-being center, brand new building. We have indoor track in here. Uh, there's a demonstration kitchen, a relaxation room, really nice building. You don't have to be an athlete to use it, but we are a division three. Uh, so if you decide to be an athlete at E-Town, you are going to be a division three athlete. But tons of different clubs, intramurals will um, happen in here. Really nice, nice facility to really you know, engage all of your health and well-being needs. 
So as far as the application process, it is pretty simple. I will always recommend to check out all of your colleges and really see what application processes might be different because it might change slightly. Uh, but for us, it's pretty easy. We are on the common application as well as the Etown application. All we really need from you is your high school transcript, a recommendation letter, rewriting sample, and that's pretty much it. So it's a pretty easy way to apply. We are test optional this year, so you don't have to worry about sending any ACTs or, um, or SATs in for us. Within about two to three weeks after you submit your application, you'll hear back from us. So you will hear about an acceptance pretty early on. Uh, I always recommend to students, if you can apply before the holidays in December, that means you'll hear back before your winter break, which will be really good to kind of spend your winter break relaxing and hearing back, back about your acceptances. Within that entire timeline, you do have until May 1st to make your ent entire college decision. So you have plenty of time to decide yes or no, whether you want to attend Etown or not. As far as scholarship wise, we do have a lot of different scholarships, all merit based. Uh, so when you submit your application to Etown, you're automatically considered. With our scholarships right now, they range from 12 to $17,000. So 12,000 at Dean's, 17,000 at Presidential. We also offer other scholarships, including Mosaic, Music Performance, and then the Stamp Scholarship, which is our full tuition scholarship for about 10 students per year. Uh, so to give you an idea as far as price here, we are around 45,000, but most students pay between 16 and 20,000 to actually attend here. So it makes it a little more affordable um, than that 45. We also encourage you to fill out the FAFSA starting October 1st to make sure you get all your financial aid stuff in. So that way your um, price can come down even further than just the merit-based scholarship. I also, of course, highly encourage you guys to visit colleges. Um, of course, visit us, but visit all of your colleges that you're looking at. Uh, we are gonna be open more during the summer. So you can actually see campus and get inside buildings a little bit more often. Uh, we've been open this entire year, but buildings have been a little bit limited for us. So definitely come and check this out. We have a bunch of virtual visits happening. Um, so I highly recommend getting involved and really seeing campus for yourself. Um, we also have opportunities for you to chat with students if you wanna chat with them over Zoom or chat with professors or your coaches over Zoom, we allow that as well. So definitely recommend to get out there and ask your questions. But thank you guys so, so much. I'll throw my information into the chat and I appreciate you guys being here today. Thank you. All right, awesome. If you have any questions for Elizabethtown College, please put it in the Q&A at the bottom. Next up, we have Franklin and Marshall College. Hi everyone, my name is Shelby Jones and I'm one of the assistant directors of admission at FNM. Um, give me a second while I pull up my screen so you can see what I'm sharing. Excellent. So Franklin and Marshall College is a small liberal arts college located in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Um, for those of you who don't know where that is, we are about an hour and 15 minutes from Philadelphia, about 40 minutes from our state capital of Harrisburg, two hours to DC and about three to New York. So we are um, really nicely located if you wanna access any of the major East Coast cities. But as for our actual location in Lancaster, we are located in a small city or a big town, depending on what your perspective is. We have about 65,000 people living in Lancaster City, um, and we are really fortunate to be within walking distance of the great restaurants and shops and stuff downtown. For our campus community, we have about 2,400 students. We currently represent 45 states and 47 countries. About 25% of our students are domestic students of color and about 20% of our students are international. So we have a really um, diverse campus and we really do value diversity in every sense of the word. We have a college house system instead of dormitories. So that means that from the moment you step foot on campus, you have an instant community in your college house and you'll be a member of your college house for all four years. Um, it's a really great way to help ease that transition from high school to college so that you feel you can take advantage of all the opportunities on campus immediately. Academically, we have over 60 areas of study for you to choose from, and we give students um, the autonomy and um, choice to really take advantage of academics in a way that best suits them. So you can structure a major in different ways. Um, you can study across disciplines and really take advantage of a liberal arts education. We have a lot of student-run organizations on campus, um, especially relative to our student body size. So our students are really active and um, really re well-rounded in their activities. So we really encourage students to take advantage of those opportunities. We have 27 athletic programs. We are a D3 school. So um, you are not having to focus solely on athletics. You can really balance academics and athletics well. And with all those numbers, we are one F and Emily. I know it's a little bit cheesy, but it actually does work out really well because we are so community focused in our approach. 
academics, I'll focus a lot on that because I think that's what we do best. You can see from our stats that we really value the small class sizes and um, easy access to professors. With the nine to one student to faculty ratio, you not only have a lot of access to professors in the classroom, um, but outside of the classroom. So you don't have to wait in very long lines for office hours and you have a lot of opportunities to work closely with professors, whether that be via research, independent study, guided reading, or whatever it may be. You're going to have very close relationships with both your peers and your professors, and we think that really adds to your academic experience. 80% of our classes are discussion based. So you're going to have to take an active role in the classroom. Um, and with the small classes, class sizes, that really does um, help students feel comfortable sharing their opinions about the coursework. Interdisciplinary curriculum is huge for us. Um, we really want you to kind of blend different areas of study together so that you can see. Um, your education from all perspectives. So um, some of our core classes that you have to take to graduate are interdisciplinary. And then a lot of the classes themselves kind of cross over different disciplines as you make your way through your desired major. Um, one other thing that our maximum class size is 25. So you're never going to be in a class larger than that. And I think that is um, a really great benefit of going to a smaller school. Outside of the classroom, we really encourage our students to study abroad. About 50% of our students do study abroad at some point during their time on campus. We have partnerships with over 220 programs all across the world. So if you wanted to go to any one of the seven continents, you could um, and still have a really amazing educational experience. Um, I kind of mentioned the Lancaster community in the beginning, but we have partnerships with over 80 local organizations. So if you wanted to volunteer or do an internship locally, you certainly could. Um, but if you're wanting to get that experience back home, our Office of Student Postgraduate Development is a wonderful resource for you um, for anything career, internship, or graduate school related. Their slogan is that they prepare students for not only a successful career, but a successful life. So you'll learn the personal skills that really help you um, when it comes to interviews and um, other communications with um, people in the workforce. So um, we call it OSPGOD. You'll definitely want to go to OSPGOD as early as you possibly can. You'll have an advisor for all four years, the same person you'll work with um, to make sure that you are exposed to opportunities that will further your goals. We have a lot of other resources on campus. We have a learning support specialist to help teach um, overarching study skills. We have a writing center, a um, math and science tutoring center. We are really, um, we really are student focused and we try to make sure that there is help no matter in what way you need it. Getting to FNM, we have a holistic approach for application. Um, just putting on my admission hat for one second. This, uh, when you fill out the application, this is not a situation where less is more. More is more when it comes to filling out your application because we want to know you not only as a student, but as a person and a potential community member. So take time to fill out your activities, take time for your essay. It really does make a difference. Um, as you can see, we're on the Common and Coalition app. We are test optional and have been for the past decade. So if um, you're unable to take a standardized test or your scores don't represent your ability as a student, then feel free to apply test optional. We are interview optional and we are offering those virtually. So feel free to take part in that no matter where you're calling in from. Um, and we have early decision as well as regular decision. We um, very quickly, we have need-based financial aid. So if you fill out the FAFSA and the CSS profile, that will enable you to receive a financial aid package from us. If you have any more questions about FNM, please feel free to email me or check out our website at fnm.edu. Thank you so much for listening. Awesome, thank you so much. If you have any questions for Franklin and Marshall College, please put it in the Q&A down at the bottom at your Zoom toolbar. Next up, we have universe, or, uh, Harrisburg University of Science and Technology. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Aaron Spina. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions with Harrisburg University of Science and Technology. HU, uh, we are a small private STEM, STEM school, excuse me, I'm tongue-tied today, uh, located in the uh, capital of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Uh, we are all science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, 12 different majors available with over 18 different concentrations. We have a location uh, in Harrisburg. We also have locations in Philadelphia, close to Center City, and also two, hopefully coming soon, HU Panama and HU Abu Dhabi. So from our perspective, we offer some unique majors in the field of STEM. Uh, some of our biggest ones are our advanced manufacturing program, which is really the engineering side of the university, biotechnology, which is very heavy on the pre-med emphasis, but also two areas like pharmaceutical design, 
Computer Information Sciences, which is our dual credited program with an ABET accreditation where you can do cybersecurity, software engineering and analysis, even to AI and robotics. Uh, we are only the fourth school in the United States to actually offer a four year bachelor degree. We do esports management and production. So being able to get a degree to learn the business side of esports and also too, we have a brand new four year major in forensic science for those of you who want to learn toxicology, pathology, entomology, and more of the scientific side of um, the programs in itself. Outside of that, we do drone work through geospatial technology. Uh, we cover integrative sciences, which is another pre-med program and also has forensic investigation. For you gamers in the audience, we also do interactive media with traditional game development and also programs going into uh, film and production, and then also to management, entrepreneurship, and business administration. So what's college life like at HU? Uh, we are a very small campus. We have one 14-story academic center currently where all of your classes are held, a new 11-story academic center that's going to be opened up by the end of uh, 2022. And also, too, we just have some renovated space that we opened up for the fall of 2021 for our students in a connecting building called Strawberry Square. But really, the city is your campus, so you get to utilize everything within a six block radius for you. We have apartment style living right across the street with four housing buildings and also two off site options as well. Uh, with all of our students, they get a free membership to the YMCA to utilize uh, five minutes right down the road. But outside of that, you can join a multitude of different clubs and activities on campus. And just like, you know, most of the colleges here on the panel as well, if there is not something you see or would like to get involved in, you have the ability to create your own club in as little as six weeks. Housing is very unique in the sense because it is like your own, you know, first apartment leaving away from home. All your amenities are included. Uh, it's carpeted and heated and air conditioned. You get a private kitchen in there and also your own private bathroom as well with some free Wi-Fi and internet access. Uh, with us for esports, we are currently the number one best esports program in the country, uh, rated number one by Tempest Awards last year, uh, the two time defending Overwatch national champion, and also two, we participate in Collegiate League of Legends. Uh, we have the largest collegiate esports tournament in the country on our campus or virtually during the pandemic every year, uh, with anywhere from over 100 colleges all throughout the United States who participate. We also have a very large esports club as well, which has been really uh, unique for our students during the pandemic, where uh, back in December, our club members actually created an amateur Rocket League team and were invited to a national tournament virtually held by EA Sports. So a lot of unique opportunities from the varsity side and also the club based side. Any students who can make one of our League of Legends or Overwatch spots, you actually do get a full academic scholarship to the university. With scholarships to Harrisburg University, uh, it's all gonna be merit-based. So 2.75 GPA for admission is our requirement. We are test optional, always have been. Uh, it'll start out as a minimum of $12,000 per year and go all the way up to $16,000 per year. Uh, to be able to maintain those scholarships, all you need to do is be able to keep a 2.0 GPA while you're on campus. But outside of that, of course, financial aid, FAFSA, anything else can be stackable on top of that as well. What are some reasons that students should look into Harrisburg University? Uh, for us being small, average class size is really about 10 to 12 inside your major. We cap all of our courses off at 24, so you will never go larger than that. Uh, internships are mandatory. Uh, we are very much a project-based and a research-based university, but every student must complete at least 135 hours of approved internship work. Outside of that, we have classes built into your curriculum for career development and also project and research work. So the average student is leaving HU with about four years, uh, you know, a four year degree. They also have their work experience, about a year of work experience on a resume. And on top of that, a year worth of project or research based experience. Uh, outside of that, 92% of our graduates are working within their fields within six months of graduation or going right into graduate or med school. Uh, very proud of our class of 2020. 90% of our graduates had work or moved right on to grad or med school within six months after graduation. And for them, that was not an easy feat with everything that's been going on. But also too, having the accessibility like the other colleges um, on this panel as well, within three hours outside of Harrisburg, Philadelphia, New York, uh, Washington DC, Baltimore and Pittsburgh. So a lot of opportunity, not only for adventure, but also to, uh, to be able to pursue those job opportunities as well. For us, it's very simple to apply to Harrisburg University. You can go to harrisburgu.edu uh, for any underclassmen, of course, in here. Uh, we open our application September 1st, but you can also go through the Common App. Once you submit your application, give us a copy of your transcript. 
we can have an answer or decision to you within 48 hours. So very quick turnaround time for all of our students. But outside of that, I have my information in the chat. But again, I'm the associate director. I also uh, serve as the esports recruiter at college and the high school dual enrollment. So if you have any questions about HU, please feel free to reach out. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. If you have any questions for Harrisburg University of Science and Technology, go ahead and put it in the Q&A at this point in time. Next up, we have Lycoming College. Apologize if he's having trouble. Give me one second. Okay. Sorry about that. Hello, everybody. My name is Emma Kabinski. I am one of the admissions counselors at Lycoming College. Um, so just to start off with some background about Lycoming, we are a small liberal arts school in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Um, that is a small city uh, located in central Pennsylvania. Um, we were founded in 1812, which makes us uh, within the 50 oldest colleges in the, uh, in the country. Um, so we are strong in our traditions, but we do focus on um, keeping up with um, technology and making sure our students are getting a 21st century modern education. We have about 1200 students in total, um, close to a 50-50 male to female ratio. And we do have students coming from um, all over the country and all over the world. Only about 50% of our students are from Pennsylvania. Um, so we do have students coming from um, you know, California, Texas, East Coast states, as well as 15 um, countries um, across the world. Um, we do have about a 12 to 1 student faculty ratio, so class sizes are fairly small. A large class would be about 30 students, and that would be more in your general education classes. But as you get deeper into your major, classes could go down to you know, 15, 10, even 5, depending on your major. Um, we don't offer any graduate studies on campus, so we are focusing on our grad, uh, undergrad students, a lot of research opportunities, or um, field work experience that a lot of times at larger institutions go to graduate students. Um, those are opportunities that our undergrad students are able to take advantage of. Um, just a couple rankings at the bottom there within the best 385 colleges, um, top return on investment colleges, um, and within the best tier one national liberal arts and science institutions. To go into our academics, we do have 43 majors and 66 minors currently. Um, some of those majors listed there are some of our newer and more niche majors, so neuroscience, astrophysics, biochemistry, um, but some of other popular majors we offer are business, uh, criminal justice. Um, we have a pre-health track, so students looking to go pre-med or pre-veterinary, pre-dentistry, um, we have that for students as well. We do have two new majors that we're going to be offering starting fall 2021. Um, so that's going to be 3D animation. And then we're also um, including our gender, uh, women and gender studies that used to be a minor is now going to be offered as a major as well. And I really encourage students to, you know, cross disciplines, really focus on what they're interested in um, and kind of customize their education. 100% of our students do complete what we call enhanced academic experiences. Um, so that's a study abroad program, an internship, a research project. We have um, an office specifically for this um, opportunity for students. That's our Center for Enhanced Academic Experience. Um, so through that office, students have a career advisor that works specifically um, with their um, specific area of study. So um, we have an advisor for STEM students, an advisor that works with our arts and humanities students. So they know what past students have, um, where they've interned, um, where they've gone off to grad school, um, where they studied abroad to, um, within their, their field. Um, so that's a really great resource for students. But this, also, this office also does a, you know, general career services, um, a resume building workshop, interview skills, things like that. So again, a great resource for students to take advantage of as early as their freshman year. 
Um, student life on campus is pretty lively. We do have a requirement for students to live in campus housing all four years, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean a residence hall. We do have apartments and houses uh, for upperclassmen to live off campus, but still in that campus-based housing. Um, we do have 80 plus clubs and organizations, so general interest clubs, academic-based clubs, Greek life. Um, there's lots of ways to get involved and meet, um, meet new people. Um, we have our outdoor leadership and education um, organization, which is um, we've had for about five years now. And this program really takes advantage of our surrounding landscape. So they go on camping trips, hiking, canoeing, fishing. Um, they go on day trips, weekend trips, or even week long, you know, um, May term trips, which is really exciting. We are division three athletics. Um, we do have 17 um, uh, NCAA athletic teams between men and women. Um, and we are going to be introducing a field hockey team within the next year, as well as a baseball team. And then we usually have campus wide events, um, the a campus con uh, carnival, a concert on campus. Obviously, those are on hold right now with COVID, but hopefully um, by the time some of you are students will be able to reintroduce that. Um, to talk about application process, we are on the Common App and the Coalition App. We are a free application. There's a couple dates for you to keep in mind there. We have an early decision deadline of November 15th, early action deadline of December 1st, and then beyond that, um, we're rolling decisions. So as you get your application materials in, give us a week or two to um, read and review and you'll get a decision back out. We require the application itself, a personal essay, your high school transcript, um, your standardized test scores, and then at least one letter of recommendation. When you apply, you're automatically considered for all of our merit-based scholarships. Um, this year, that ranges from eighteen dollars to $30,000. But beyond that, based on your FAFSA information, we do have need-based aid um, that we do award to students. Um, and then just to conclude here, I encourage you to check out our website. We do have, we are open to in-person visits. Um, so if you wanted to come to campus, get a tour and sit down with a counselor, you can definitely do so. Um, but we do have virtual options as well. Connect over Zoom um, with a current student or your counselor, or just check out our virtual tour to see what our campus looks like. Um, I will include in the chat a link to our website so you can find out who your specific counselor is and get their contact information. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you have any questions at this point in time for like home and college, I definitely suggest go ahead and put it in that Q&A as we are kind of wrapping up our session here. Uh, I'll invite our panelists and presenters back on video if you could please join me. Um, I just want to thank you all so, so much for being here and sharing some absolutely amazing information about your institutions and my attendees today. Thank you again so much for joining us. I definitely learned a lot. I hope you did too. Uh, and that you do follow up with these institutions as well after this. Uh, once again, this is kind of like an appetizer, right? So a little bit of a taste of each institution, but it is up to you to go ahead and check the menu or follow up with them uh, on their websites or their contact information to get a little bit more info. With that said, after you close this window, a really quick four question survey will appear. Go ahead and give us some feedback, my attendees. It's really appreciated. Uh, we, do have, uh, we do not have any more sessions for the next time slot, so don't worry about signing up for those for today, but go ahead and check out the website to make sure uh, that if you would like to join us for any other sessions, you absolutely can do so. Uh, also, if you'd like to relive the fun with us today, feel free. A recording will be available at strivescan.com backslash SS. DA, and you can go ahead and check that out within the next few business days. Without further ado, everybody, I'd like to just say thank you once again and uh, enjoy the rest of your day, please. Have a great day, y'all. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody.